DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, John Hodiak. Tonight's story, The Green Wall. This is how it happened. It was the 4th of July, 1944. And the fireworks had been popping all right, only these fireworks weren't for fun. The skyrockets turned out to be ACAC, and the Roman candles were 105 that screamed over your head on their way to a Nazi target. The place Normandy. And me? Well, I'm Curtis Cullen, 102nd Recon, a sergeant in the turret of my tank in the middle of a war. We'd been moving forward, and suddenly I stopped. I called Joe Dobson, who was in the tank next to mine on the squadron net. Fox 2-5. Fox 2-5. This is Fox 2-1. Sergeant Dobson, can you hear me? Fox 2-1. Fox 2-5. I got you, Kurt. What are you breaking for, child call? Hedgerows, you dope. At the end of this field, see him? So what? This is Normandy, Sergeant Killer. What's a couple of hedgerows to attack? Look, Joe, don't be a wise guy. Get hung up in one of those traps and the Germans will open you up like a tin can. They're on the other side of the hedgerows. There ain't a Nazi in the neighborhood. Flatfoot's going through. Flatfoot. That's what Joe Dobson called his M5. I watched him gunner till the track screamed. He was going to try to ram his tank through a Normandy hedgerow. And that was no picnic. A hedgerow is a solid green wall made out of leaves and roots and stalk and dirt. And on top of it all, a thick leafy mass of large shrubs and small trees. The whole thing may be six feet high and four feet thick. And ever since we hit the beach after D-Day, those babies had gone in our way, but good. I got back to Dobson on the net. Joe, don't be a goon. Cut back. I tell you, the Germans are on the other side. Ah, oh, sweetheart. I'll be seeing you. Flatfoot pushed down here like an elephant, and I held on my breath. She was maybe a hundred yards away when she hit the hedgerow solid, head on. And then she stopped dead. That tank was hung up, helpless as a kitten, belly 45 degrees up in the air. I signaled my driver to give our tank the gun and get down there fast. But I was a lifetime too late. From behind that hedgerow, a Nazi hand grenade got there first. Right in the open hatch. Those guys in Flatfoot never knew what happened. When you blow up inside a tank, you do it fast. Yes. That's the way it was on the 4th of July, 1944. When they pulled us out of the line the next day, I had a lot of time to think about it. A lot of time. Peroni, the mechanic, had been working on the turret of the Falcon. That was the name of our tank. Gus, my driver, was inside, and I was standing by. Okay, Cullen. This turret ain't never had it so good. Hey, Sarge. What? What's the matter, Peroni? I said I got your turret working like a tough. You dreaming or something? Get off my back, will you? Okay. Go ahead. Dream away. You guys cry the turret don't tick, so what do I do? I fix it, and then what? Uh... Hey, Kurt, you want I should turn her over? No, come on out, Gus. Okay. This ground big enough for two? Sure. Sit down. You look rotten, Kurt. I feel rotten. Still worrying over Joe Dobson, that it? What do you think? Look, pal, I know how you feel, but what's grieving going to get you? Joe Dobson and I lived across the street from each other. Cooch, we used to call him. <laughs> Don't ask me why. He sure got sore every time we did. Yeah? Now, where does Cooch wind up? Dead. Murdered. By a hedgerow. Kurt, you've been acting a little squirrely these last two days. Get it straight. The Nazis finished off that tank. That's your enemy, pal, not no hedgerow. We've got to lick those hedgerows. Well, look, it, it took them farmers hundreds of years to grow the darn things. You figuring on getting rid of them overnight? We've got to. Yeah? Well, how? If I knew how, I wouldn't be marking time here. Okay, you're the mechanical genius. You're the guy that's always dreaming up gimmicks. You'll get cracking and do something about it. I wish I could. I only wish I could. Sorry I'm late, Major Olds. I was over at maintenance, sir. Okay, Kildon, sit down with the others. Yes, sir. All right, man, let's have it quiet. All right, try it down for you. I called you squadron officers and non-coms here because you've got a problem. That's more than four weeks since we hit the beach here in Normandy. 
They were hot as firecrackers. The Nazis were on the run. And we got tangled up with the Green Death. These Normandy hedgerows. Now this invasion is going nowhere. And it's not going to move again until we get our tanks through. We've got to get through somehow. Now, you all know we can't use the roads. The Nazis are squatting up there at San Lo, just itching for us to try. We're going to have to make it through the field. That brings us smack up against our problem, the hedgerows. We don't lick them, they're going to lick us. Now, somewhere in this army, there's a man who knows how to get our tanks through those hedgerows. Maybe it's one of you. That's all. You're dismissed. Well, where to next, Hanson? Oh, I don't know, Major. My maintenance men aren't getting anywhere with it. Well, the whole trouble, it seems to me, is Major. Yes, what is it, Kulin? Sir, I've been thinking a lot about these hedgerows. Yes? Seems to me we've been ramming our tanks against them like a bunch of stubborn billy goats. And everybody knows a goat can't butt down a stone wall. Now, go on, Sergeant. Well, sir, we've got to punch our way through. So why not a kind of a thing attached to the front of the tank? You mean like a bumper? No, sir. Like a snow plow, maybe. No plow. Yes, sir. You got any ideas on how to make it, Julian? I think so, sir. Could we go over to maintenance? I'll show you what I mean. No plow, huh? All right, you may have something, Sergeant. At least we can give it a try. At this point, we'll try anything. Let's go. All right, Kulin, let's hear about this gimmick you dreamed up. Well, it's like this, sir. Uh, can we move over by that tank? All right. Now, look here, Major. Get the shape of the final drive on this tank. Mm-hmm. She's round. Nothing sharp about her. What happens when we're tearing along and bust into a hedgerow? Our tank just bounces off. Or gets hung up. I know, sir. I've seen it happen. But maybe if we put something on the front of the tank, sir. Something that's sharp, that'll cut in. Like a knife blade, you mean? No, sir. More like a fork, Major. You see... This fork contraption will bite into the hedge. Loosen those darn roots from the dirt. Maybe tear a hole right through. Uh, well, that sounds all right, Kilden. I'm sure it'll work, sir. I'm positive it'll work. Oh, well, maybe. Why don't let maintenance try and uh, work a blueprint on it? Oh, sir, if we make a blueprint of this thing, it'll have to plow through a lot of red tape. Maybe even have to go to the big brass in Washington. And that'll take too much time. We've got to do something fast. Well, I'm in just as big a hurry as you are, Sergeant. I'm sorry, sir. And don't be sorry, because you're right. We don't have time to be going through channels. In this war, you're either quick or you're dead. I know all about the dead, Major. Well, then the rest of us better be quick. You want to try and make one of these forks of yours? I got a crazy idea to work, sir. Then hop to it, Kulin. On the double. Thank you, sir. On the double. With a green light from the Major, I figured this hedgerow assignment ought to be a breeze. But... That's where I slipped my track. I needed heavy metal to make that fork. Big, tough hunks of steel. There wasn't anything like that in this man's army. I tried every ordnance depot in Normandy. Not a prayer. Finally, I got a brainstorm. Gus and I drove our tank out in a field. It was almost midnight. The big hedgerows threw black, ugly shadows. Right in front of us, we could just see the burned-out hulk of an empire. Is that it, Kurt? Yeah, it's over here. Check. All right, dismount. Yeah. Yeah, sure, it's quiet. Now, keep it down, will you? Well, what's the matter? The Nazis are back of that hedgerow. They'll have a field day. You sure this is Joe Dobson's tank? Yeah, I'm sure. You don't forget things like this. What's the sense of putting a tow to her trying to get her back to maintenance? She's all burned out. We'll cut her up for scrap. Use it for the fork. I figured... Maybe Joe would like to be in on this. Well, how'd you know it'll work? I don't. Here, let's get the tow cable hooked up. All right. Hold it. What's up? I thought I heard something. Wait a minute. Sure is one bright moon. Anybody's on the other side of that hedgerow, he's got a couple of sitting ducks on this side. Wait a minute. Let's get to it and scram out of here. It's a plane. Where? There it is. Hey, he's pretty low. Is it ours? I don't know, but he's coming back. Drop the tow. Come on, get in. Let's pull out of here fast. Okay, give her the gun. Gary, he's coming into strength. That's over three to the left. Pull him in there. He's in a dive, Gus. Move it. Just made it. 
What happened? He strafed Dobson's tank out there. <laughs> Looks like he got to it about five days too late. You think he got a beat on us, too? I don't think so. Well, let's don't hang around here to find out, huh? We better stick under these trees a while. Them Germans, making it tough on us all the way from the beaches on in. They sure don't want us to win this war. They never figured we'd get this far. That's why we've got to be... Beaches. Holy cow, that's it. What's what? They never figured we could get this far into Normandy because they knew we'd never get to the beaches. What? Because 50 yards off every beach in this country, the Nazis loaded the ocean with underwater obstacles. Sharp metal spike to rip our LSTs to pieces. So? So there's our fork, ready made for us. All we got to do is go down and get those spikes. Yeah, well, what about the tank out there? We don't need it, Gus. I've got a better idea. Tomorrow, you and me, we're going to find us a boat and go fishing. <laughs> Like you haven't slept in a week. 
Not quite that long, sir. I uh, was up at call all morning, Sergeant. They were in a stew about this hedgerow mess. General wanted to know how we were coming along. Well, what did you say, sir? Oh, I told him we had a natural-born mechanic on the job. <laughs> you. Looks like maybe you stuck yourself way out on a limb, Major. I don't think so. What do you think about us Americans, Kilden? We're a bunch of backyard engineers. Tinkering with the car, fixing the lawnmower, and... We're not going to get thrown by a hedgerow. No, sir. I guess we're not. Yeah, but the question is, how soon do we lick it? I don't know, sir. But I better get back to work on it. Maybe this afternoon I'll be able to... Hey, have Sergeant something. Kilden! Kilden! It's Gus. Maybe something's up. Let's find out. He said he'd call me if any... This way, Major. Perotti's well, got it, Major. That angle of yours, Kurt... It worked like a dream. How about it, Perotti? Major, this here is the baby. We got her welded on so she can't crack off. Brace with this bar. You see what I mean? Holy catfish, Major. I think we got it. I think this is it. How soon will be ready to test, Perotti? Well, the, uh, the welding ain't all done, sir. Maybe tonight, but for sure tomorrow morning. All right, Kulin. We'll try it on the hedgerow in the morning. I'll get word back to Cor. The general will want to be in on it. The general, sir? That's right. You worried about it? No, sir. I think this fork will do the job. And if it doesn't, that's what then? We just come right back here, Major, and start all over again. I didn't get much sleep again that night. I kept asking myself over and over again, will it work? Will it work? One morning finally came with a dark gray day. The general pulled into our CP right after breakfast. He looked like he hadn't had much sleep either. When we got down to the field for the big test, he called me over. Sergeant, Major Rolls tells me this idea of a hedgerow fork is yours. Well, yes, sir. But lots of other guys have been working on it, too, sir. Where's the tank you're using for this experiment? Up there, sir, on the rise. You know the driver? It's my tank, sir. And my driver, Corporal Gus Aberholly. He's the best driver in the office. He's going to smash into this hedgerow in front of us? Well, that's the plan, General. Major Rolls figured we ought to station ourselves behind the hedge, just like the Germans would be. That way, we'll know exactly how good it is. It looks good to me, Sergeant. I think it'll work. I hope so, sir. I hope so. I was holding my breath tight when I said that. But it was even tighter when Major Old signaled my tank and gave Gus the go-ahead. This was it. I watched Gus give my thoughts and the gun a hundred yards away and she barreled downhill full speed. Gus was driving that thing like a madman. And when she hit, something was going to have to give. I knew that. This thing had to work. It had to. And it did. That sawtooth fork cut into that hedgerow like a knife into butter. She ripped out a whole section of hedge. The next thing we saw was the falcon busting on past that hedgerow with an open gap behind her big enough to march an army through. The army wasn't ready to march through yet. There was still a big job to be done. It was less than an hour later that I got a message to report to the general right away. All right, Kulin, here it is. Yes, General. We're convinced that hedgerow fork of yours is the key to San Lo. But we need duplicates of that key, lots of them, to get this army on the move again. Now you know why I sent for you. We've got a man-sized job for you, Kulin, and ten short days to do it in. What is it, sir? Sergeant, by the 24th of July, I want every tank in the U.S. Army, M5s and Sherman's boats, fitted up with one of those hedgerow forks. In ten days? But, General, that means maybe more than 500 tanks. You're wrong. It means more than 1,000. I'm putting you and those other men who worked with you on special orders to First Army Ordnance. They're going to make these contraptions for you. This job's got top priority. Anything you need, you get. I'll see to that. Is that all, sir? I think that's enough. Don't you, Sergeant? Well, I can't say yet, sir. I'll let you know in ten days. No, Gus, no. Take a left. You turret happy or something? Sherberg's that away. We're not looking for Sherberg. I noticed a big concrete bunker half a mile down this way. Concrete? And loaded down with steel supports. We need that metal, Gus. We need it bad. Hey, 
outside. What is it, Peroni? Look, children, what do you say we break for the night? All, all this welding lights up the place. It's bright in Times Square. You out of your mind? We got work to do. Yes, so work in the daytime. What are you trying to do? Invite them cherries to a strafing party? Okay, go out and round up some canvas, Peroni. We're tending up this whole area. Ten? You heard me. This job's going to take 24 hours a day. It's just tough we ain't got 25. <laughs> got set it up, Hewlin. Got maybe 200 more to go, Captain. How about metal? They're going to be enough? We got demolition teams up and down the beaches, sir, blowing up those obstacles in the water. We'll get enough. But what about time? We got three more days, sir. Three days. Without the hedgerows on their side, those Nazis don't know what they're in for. men and women 
has been a matter of the greatest importance and the most careful planning. The 10 Safety Council Awards are important because of what they signify. They represent the saving of many lives and the prevention of thousands of accidents. They serve as a constant reminder to DuPont men and women in plants, offices, laboratories, and warehouses that an effective safety program is their best insurance. These awards have been won by the men and women who practice safety every moment of their working days as they produce the DuPont Company's Better Things for Better Living through chemistry. Once again, here's our star, John Holiak. John, it's, it's good having you back on Cavalgate again. Thanks, Si. I especially enjoyed playing the part of Sergeant Curtis Kewen on tonight's show. I'm sorry he couldn't be with us himself. But he asked me to be sure and tell everyone that he was only one of the guys who helped with the Battle of the Hedgerows. Good night. Thank you. Tonight's Japan Cavalcade was written by Robert Mason Pollock and was based on the article Sergeant Cullen Licks the Hedgerows by W.L. White, which appeared in the recent issue of the Reader's Digest. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Boyd. The program was directed by John Dollar. In support of our star, John Hodiak, our Cavalcade cast included Les Damon, Jeffrey Bryant, Bernard Lenro, Bill Zucker, Chuck Webster, and George Petrie. This is Cy Harris speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, on Saturday, Poppy Day, your American Legion Auxiliary asks you to wear a memorial poppy in honor of our war dead from the Argonne to Korea. Made by disabled veterans for the help of disabled veterans and the aid of war widows and orphans, these bright red memorial flowers are the veterans' way to honor the dead as they care for the living. Wear a poppy. Give as generously as you've received. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will be broadcast from the DuPont Nylon plant in Seaford, Delaware. Our story, The Valley of the Swans, pays tribute to a forgotten pioneer and the lost colony of Delaware. Be sure to listen next week when our stars will be Dana Andrews and Louise Albritton. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry.